Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today, well, today is about the middle of December, and one of our projects we're doing today is, is we're taking an area that we had planted a couple years ago with flowers, but left fallow this last year. So it didn't have any cover crop on it. It had basically just reclaimed native vegetation. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tarp this area and get it back into production for this next year. We've gotten a lot of questions on previous videos on no-till about, well, how do you take an area that's, that's rough or that has natural sod on it or, or that and actually get it into production using a no-till method? This is one methodology of doing it. This area hasn't been tilled and it's uh, in pretty rough shape. A lot of the beds uh, are gonna need to be reformed after we kill the vegetation off. But um, what we have in, in a good state is the soil tests on this have shown that we need to raise the pH, so we've added additional lime, and in the spring, when we get ready to plant, that's when we'll start putting on our extra compost. Now there's many different ways of doing this. Many people would apply all the minerals and all the compost now in the uh, late fall, early winter, and uh, be ready to go, uh, letting the vegetation die into the compost, etc. We've chosen not to do that simply because, well, right now our compost pile is frozen and uh, also too that uh, there is enough vegetation left here on top that will probably feed the soil biology, which is going to be running pretty slow in the winter time. What we are going to do on this area, this area is a roughly 32 foot by 100. We are planting our areas in blocks that are typically 4,000 square feet of plantable space, so there's 16 rows of 100 feet. It ends up being uh, roughly somewhere around 64 feet by 100 feet because uh, these things are approximately um, four foot on center. So the silage tarp that we're using we got from Farmer's Friend. We'll have a link for it down below in the show notes. Uh, this is a five mil uh, thickness. It's got UV treatment in it and it's also got a bit higher tensile strength than you would find from normal plastic that you'd buy at a home center. So this tarp, if uh, taken care of, uh, should last several years before uh, you end up with major problems. If you do end up with a hole in it or something, uh, you know, somehow got a puncture in it, you can just mend it. I just use it like a piece of Gorilla Tape and just put it over the top of it or wherever the hole is. And that typically uh, would extend the life on this. This uh, setup you see here is also kind of a neat trick. For putting silage tarps down, one of the things we do is use these D-handled shaped shovels and we'll stick them in the ground and using a, like a 2x2 two two in this case, just run it through the center tube. And this way it's uh, elevated off the ground and you can basically take the tarp itself or any plastic and roll it out. It's really handy to use this method too when you're putting a skin on top of a, a, a high tunnel or any kind of long length where you're unrolling plastic or, or something like that. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the area in here. Um, this is a very heavy clay soil area. This is some of our heaviest clay and it typically is the last to end up getting uh, ready for spring uh, simply because it takes a very long time for it to dry out. This silage tarp is not going to be permeable to water, so any of the moisture that's going to be in the soil from this point until mid-March is going to be not from rainfall, but is going to be from just groundwater coming up. It's already had good fall rains on it for the last uh, couple, three months. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the soil that we're going to be tarping today. Now, as we talked about earlier, this is an area that was left fallow. Uh, we're not going to apply any uh, compost on it at this point. We're going to do that in the spring after the vegetation has been killed off. Talking a little bit about this tarp is not water permeable. So all the moisture that's going to be activating on, on the biology below the surface is going to be from the subsoil itself or uh, the water table uh, as it wicks up. With this soil here being as heavy clay as it is, that's not going to be a problem. There's going to be plenty of moisture for the biology. This will give really no thermal protection at all, but will protect it from, uh, you know, snow or hail or anything like that, but it's really not an issue. And uh, the whole idea here is, is that we want the biology basically to kill off or, or consume the killed off plants. And we think that uh, today being December 13th, 
that we'll be able to start pulling this tarp back and then applying compost and spring minerals and fertilizers probably by the mid-March. It could even be a little earlier, but that's kind of our target. So we're going to want to start being ready to go uh, to just kind of tidy up the beds, put on the compost, and start putting plants in the ground. This is really an easy technique. It's not rocket science. You just basically roll the tarp out and uh, you could either use a, you know, use a shovel and just kind of dig a little dirt around the edges and throw it on it, or in our case we're using what are called row bags or sandbags. Um, these are like 44 cents a piece and we got them from a farmer's friend. And they're UV uh, resistant and uh, when you fill them with sand or, or dirt they weigh about, I don't know, 20 pounds a piece, somewhere around in there. And we just kind of equally put those around on the tarp just to keep the edges down. Uh, the biggest thing is, is when you do put tarps down, and you, especially if you're in a windy area, you want to make certain that you, uh, you, you really secure the tarp well, because the worst thing your neighbors would want to see is a 32 by 100 foot piece of plastic coming at them. So let's just walk through and we'll get it started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is roll it out. This is folded up. This is, this is being 32 foot wide. It's folded approximately eight times. So what we're going to do is roll out the length and uh, then we'll just start pulling it outwards to get to the 32 feet. So the nice thing about this, this setup is if it works right, it should roll right along and uh, we can just keep walking the whole distance. Looks like we still have a bubble. Got it all laid out. And as you can see, we need to add more sandbags because it's still blowing in the wind. And we get a big wave in the back. A bubble that, if we were filming, we would have saw that blew up over our heads. So we're still uh, trying to get it to lie down flat. And we're going to have to go get some more sandbags to uh, get rid of all those little bubbles. Okay, we got the plastic pulled out. We put sandbags uh, around the edges and a few in the back where it was really poofing up. Uh, the next step is uh, we're going to get some more bags filled up and we're going to equally put a, a few more bags in the center. Uh, just to keep it from flying away, make sure our edges are sealed up real good, and uh, and then we're going to put uh, a little more fabric cloth of our regular geotextile fabric right here in the front just to finish this off. This whole thing encompasses, including some of the uh, additional area that we tarped earlier, includes 10 100 foot bed rows. And, and the rows are two and a half foot wide, so roughly what we're talking about is 2,500 square feet of planting space here. And there isn't uh, anything more we'll need to do after we put these tarps on other than just to make sure it doesn't blow away. But uh, what we're going to do is just leave this here for about two to three months. And like I said, about the middle of March, we'll come and we'll start pulling the tarps back. We're going to plant from the Hypericums, which are on the far left side over here, this way so we'll just unroll this as we need the beds there's no need to undo uh, you know too much at a time so the idea behind it this being plastic is also going to prevent uh, excess moisture in the spring from really getting down and and making the soil too wet so we'll just take it back a row at a time and then eventually we've got some area on the far back side on the right side that we pulled tarps off of that we're going to repair by putting uh, used straw hay over it for the winter and then in the spring we'll put tarps over that too. We didn't use any cover crops this year. This is the same area a few years ago we were using cereal rye and hairy vetch. 
Uh, we didn't do that this year because the ground wasn't ready to go. And so we just used the natural vegetation as the biomass. So this is it. This is no-till. It's not high-tech, but uh, it does the job pretty well. And uh, we'll be able to get into this thing, like I said, probably in March, which uh, in the past, if you were trying to till this area, you really wouldn't even be able to get a tiller in here until probably early May. So this speeds us up by about two months. Several years, it was June. In some years, uh, when it was extremely wet, it was June. And this past year, it didn't matter at all. We had so much rain in the spring that we couldn't even get into this area, and that's why we left it follow. Well, if you have any more questions about no-till, we have some other videos in our channel on uh, some of the other no-till techniques we've used on other beds. Uh, be sure to check those out. Also, too, uh, please subscribe to our channel. You can see the logo. It's going to be uh, left or right side. We'll figure it out when you get there. And uh, if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments underneath the video. We'll try to get back to you and answer any questions we can. And thanks for watching today, and have a good day.